this is part two of a two part <laughs> mini series all about the books on my bookshelf. So, thanks for tuning into this week's episode. I am going to share with you another selection of some of the favorite books that are on my bookshelf. I am holding these books in hand as I'm recording this episode, and I'm really excited to share uh, this selection with you today. If you missed last week's episode, I would definitely encourage you to go back and give it a listen. Last week was part one of this mini series, and I talked about all of my favorite books related to growing vegetables, growing plants, and fungi. So all things mushrooms. So that's what we covered last week. And this week, you know, I'm kind of surprised. It's a pretty impressive uh, stack of books to share with you this week. And I have divided them up into a couple of categories, maybe, maybe five categories. I think I might have had five categories last week. But anyway, I have five different categories of books to share with you or the category with the most amount of books is all about beekeeping. Now, I'll just go ahead and tell you right now that I am an aspiring beekeeper. <laughs> I I have had bees the last three years. So this is my third year having bees. Now ask me if I consider myself a beekeeper. And I would tell you, no, I do not consider myself a beekeeper because I have yet to keep the bees. They always leave me this time of year. Uh, hence why I have a plethora of of beekeeping books. This year, I am optimistic uh, that I will, in fact, become a beekeeper. But anyway, that was just a little side tangent explaining why I have so many books on beekeeping to share with you today. I'm going to share them all with you because why not? Love the bees. So let's celebrate them. And then I also have some books on um, starting a homestead, different things like Picking out what kind of breeds you should get of animals, like backyard chickens or maybe a goat or two. Speaking of backyard chickens, I have three books all about chickens uh, to share with you today as well. I have two almanacs, which I'll get to, of course, later on in the show. Uh, but they're they're not... I mean, obviously, the old farmer's almanac is a must must have a copy of the old farmer's almanac. Uh, But these are two different almanacs that I also really have enjoyed reading just this year. Um, And then I've got some books on food preservation and fermentation. So this is going to be a really exciting episode. And I'm super glad that you're here uh, to hear more about the books on my bookshelf, uh, the second part of this two-part series. Let's go, y'all. Welcome to the Growing Space podcast. I'm your host, Farmer Aaron, owner of The Patio Farmer, and I believe that no matter what size space you have, you can grow food at home. Tune in each week as I share my best tips, tricks, and encouragement for tending to homegrown edible plants. I'm here to support your food growing journey. Um, Again, if you missed last week's episode, please give it a listen. There's lots of really great books all about growing vegetables and plants and discovering fun fun fungi. Give last week's episode a listen if you missed it. Like I mentioned at the top of the show, um, I have a couple of different categories of books to share with you today. And we are going to just go ahead and kick things off with talking about all of the books on bees. That I have. (laughs) Now, when we think of bees, obviously bees are pollinators. We love our bees. Without bees and butterflies and birds and other insects, other animals um, who help our plants pollinate, we would not have food. And I think there's a statistic. um, I've read this so many times. I really should know this by heart, but it's I think it's like one in four or one in three bites of food that is consumed in the United States is because of a bee. Crazy. The first book for this week is The Bees in Your Backyard. I found out about this book while listening to one of my favorite podcasts ever, Ologies by Allie Ward. I don't know if there are any fellow ologites, as Allie calls us, uh, listening to this podcast as well. But if you're really into science and like cool science, like you enjoy learning how things work and just like, I don't know, cool deep dives on specific topics. 
and hearing from experts in their field, like you should definitely hit up Allie's podcast. I'll link it in today's show notes. She had a guest. I think I've actually mentioned this particular episode on my podcast. Huh. Because now I have a podcast. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Still like getting used to the idea of being a podcaster over here. Anyway, uh, so she did a whole episode about native melatology, which is essentially the study of native bees. And she had this wonderful guest come on the show and they spent an hour talking about native bees and hundreds of native bees here in North America that are not honeybees. So big spoiler, honeybees are not native to the United States. They are native to Europe and there are some honeybees that are native to Africa. North America has no native honeybee populations. We do, however, have a ton of native bees in general. So uh, the bees in your backyard, a guide to North America's bees. And this book has tons of adorable pictures of fuzzy little bees, bees with stripes, solid colored bees, ones that are yellow, ones that are black. We've got pictures of our pollen pockets, beautiful flowers, and just all the different kinds of native bees, what they look like, where they live, how to tell different species apart. Anyway, it's just a solid nod to all of the other bee populations here in North America. So if you're looking to advance your knowledge and appreciation of native bees and or pollinators beyond the honeybee, you should check out this book. And of course, I will have this linked in the show notes. All the books from today's episode will be linked in the show notes. Uh, so no worries there. Okay. So the bees in your backyard, number one. Now this next book, and I, I should also say that all, all of these other books that I'm about to tell you about, so the next five books, they're all about honeybees. Yep. So, and beekeeping. So more the practice of uh, using honeybees as a form of livestock to cultivate honey. Yeah. So I'll tell you why I keep bees. I keep bees just because I think they're so dang cool. And I love seeing them on my plants. I just really enjoy sharing space and company with honeybees. And I was like, well, I'm just going to I'm just going to try to keep some in my backyard. This next book is called The Beekeeper's Problem Solver. This is an awesome book if you're into beekeeping, if you are a beekeeper, if you are trying to diagnose specific bee issues. This is this is a great book. This was actually gifted to me by my brother-in-law for Christmas last year because he's a gem of a person. Thank you, Derek. But this chronicles 100 common problems to beekeeping. They explore the problems and they explain the issue and provide, obviously, solutions. I've definitely consulted this book many times. <laughs> Again, this is The Beekeeper's Problem Solver, 100 Common Problems Explored and Explained. If you're a beekeeper, grab this book. These next two books are going to be great and definitely recommend them for beginners. Uh, but also, like... Even if you're not a beginner and you just want to brush up on some information, these are great reference books to have. And honestly, if you only get one book on beekeeping, it should be The Backyard Beekeeper by Kim Flottam. So Kim is very well known in the beekeeping community nationally, very well respected. And I have his fourth edition of this book. I have had the third edition as well, but I upgraded to the fourth edition because why not? But this book is an absolute guide to uh, beekeeping in your backyard. He is talking to the individual who wants to keep bees in their backyard and their home. So he's included information for urban bees and beekeepers, which I would consider myself an urban beekeeper. Um, how to use your smoker the right way. If you have seen people keeping bees before, then maybe you know that an essential piece of equipment is a smoker. And that's because smoke kind of lulls the bees into, into a more peaceful, <laughs> non-agitated state which can be really helpful when you're cracking open their home and pulling out 
you know, their frames and taking a look at them and exposing them to the elements. And they can be really upset by that because like, who wouldn't be upset by someone barging into their home and causing a bunch of ruckus and anyway. So smoker is essential and he offers some new insight on how to use your smoker the right way, better pest management. Believe it or not, you have pests in your beehives. Yep. And they can be ferocious. So pest management is critical. Uh, Providing consistent and abundant good food, also essential, and keeping your hives healthy. He really goes through it all. Like I said, if you only have one beekeeping book, make it the Backyard Beekeeper. Okay, now another uh, great reference book. I actually just recently picked this one up from my friend's uh, bookstore in Mooresville, Fred and June's Books. I wonder if any of you guys have checked them out since last week's episode, because you totally should. They're great. Uh, Fred and June's Books. Don't worry, I'll put it in the show notes. So this book I recently picked up from them, uh, and I haven't had as much time to go through it. Um, If you're looking for something, you know, that's a little easier to digest or um, a quicker reference, this would be a great book for you. There's lots of great pictures and graphics. It walks you through all the things you need to know as a beginner beekeeper. Now, getting to know bees, installing bees, and routine care. Obviously, pest and disease problems, honey production, selling your hive products. And then there's a chapter all about having fun with your bees. Well, isn't that precious? And then there's recipes in the back as well as a list of resources. So The Beginner's Guide to Beekeeping. This is authored by Daniel Johnson and Samantha Johnson. And it's endorsed by Future Farmers of America. So... Can't go wrong with an endorsement like that, right? Now, another book. Oh, this was just too good to resist that I did pick up recently. Again, I think I bought this one at the same time as Beginner's Guide to Beekeeping. This is Beehive Alchemy. Ooh. Beehive Alchemy. Projects and recipes using honey, beeswax, propolis, and pollen to make soaps, candles, creams, salves, and more. Oh my gosh it's not just honey although honey don't get me wrong like honey is delicious and super wonderful but they also make beeswax of course that's what store all of their honey in they also make something called propolis which is super sticky and it's super like kind of like cement and they use it to fill in gaps and to build things in the hive bees are so cool oh my goodness If you're looking to have some fun, or if you've got some bees, or you have a friend that has bees, and they they got all this fun stuff coming out of their hives, and you want to know what to do with it, this would be a great book for some ideas. Beehive Alchemy. And then another Simply Divine bee book is The Beekeeper's Bible. This would make a beautiful coffee table book, if you're looking for a new coffee table book, in addition to a reference book. But this, I mean... This is just an incredible compilation of information. You will find information about bees and beekeeping history. You get to understand the honeybee, understand how she works, who all's in the hive, what they do. There's a whole section on practical beekeeping, so walking you through how to keep bees. And then in this book, you'll also find honey and other bee products, and then how to use the honey, different recipes, and different crafts for what comes out of your hive. This is quite an extensive, well-rounded book. So, The Beekeeper's Bible. So, that was a solid section on books that I have all about beekeeping. We're going to take a quick break and hear from one of our podcast sponsors, and then we will be right back with more about the books on my bookshelf for this week's episode. This podcast is sponsored by Plant Club by The Patio Farmer. Plant Club by The Patio Farmer is a monthly subscription service I started in 2020. It's a membership-based opportunity to take your growing journey to the next level. 
With four different membership options, you get to decide the amount and kind of support that's right for you. All Plant Club members receive access to my online community through a platform called Circle. Having access to this platform allows members to share pictures, ask questions, celebrate harvests, and get to know each other. All Plant Club members also have access to free seeds each month, along with information on how to plant and tend to their crops, with seeding instructions and downloadable resources from the Patio Farmers Resource Library. Membership starts at just $14 a month. Join Plant Club today by visiting my website, thepatiofarmer.com slash membership. Also, when you join Plant Club this month, so the month of November, 2023, you'll be entered to win a stack of four of my all-time favorite books. This next category is going to be about like planning your homestead space. We're going to talk about different animals. And we're also not going to talk about chickens for this category because I have a whole nother section of books all about raising chickens at home. Uh, so we're going to start off with one of the books that's part of the Plant Club book gift away that I'm doing uh, this month. So again, like you heard earlier, if you join Plant Club at any level, any of the four levels in November, you will be entered to win a stack of four of my favorite books. Three of them I mentioned last week. So vegetable literacy, vegetable gardening in the Southeast, and Epic Tomatoes are part of that gift away. Plus this delightful little book called Worms Eat My Garbage. Oh my gosh. Okay. So every year, every winter, I decide on one or two fun little projects to take on. It's the off season. Usually I'm looking for a little, you know, something to grow my practice, grow my uh, homestead a bit. Two years ago, it was all about the decomposers. I inoculated some mushroom logs, which was a lot of fun. And I picked up this book, Worms Eat My Garbage, because I really wanted to get composting worms. So I bought this book and I read it. It's called Worms Eat My Garbage. Uh, It's a paperback book. I have so many things like earmarked. Um, So it's just under 200 pages. So I actually learned about this book from one of my friends. He he actually owns a (laughs) worm, earthworm casting business out in Colorado. Um, We've collaborated together on some national food system work before. And of course, you know, have got to talking and I told him about my business and then he told me about his worms, which is just so great. So anyway, he's out in Colorado and he suggested to me that I pick up this book and I am so glad that he did. You're going to learn how to compost from start to finish using worms. Everything from getting started to choosing your worm bin. It's very important. Uh, Where to put your worm bin, choosing the right bedding material for your worms what kind of worms you should be purchasing, how to purchase your worms, setting up your worm bin, feeding your worms, taking care of your worms. There's a whole FAQ section. Um, There's even a section on like other critters and pests that you could find in your worm bin, how to use your vermicomposting, and finally, treating waste as a resource. So I have been so impressed by how much these worms eat when I started my worm bin, and I just have one, it's in our crawl space. We have like a walk-in basement crawl space situation. And I'll probably talk about this more when I do my whole episode on composting at home. Also, just random plug for that episode. If you have questions about composting at home, please email them to me at thegrowingspacepodcast at gmail.com. I would love to hear your composting questions for that episode. This next book is called an introduction to heritage breeds. Um, and it's issued, uh, it's published by the Livestock Conservancy. Um, and it's all about saving and raising rare breed livestock and poultry. If you're into heritage breeds and like heirloom varieties and encouraging and promoting and stewarding these populations of biodiversity, then you should pick up this book. And it goes through, there's like breed snapshots of all the different animals. It's just a great like educational resource. And if you, again, if you are looking to add more animals to your space, it would be a great, just a great book to have on hand. So again, that is an introduction to heritage breeds, saving and raising rare breed livestock and poultry 
by the Livestock Conservancy. And then we've got this little delightful book, uh, The Backyard Cow. I bought this book a couple of years ago and I wasn't sure where I was going to land, but like who wouldn't want to have a cute little cow in the backyard to be able to milk? Dairy animals need more attention than other animals on a daily basis because you have to milk them. Also, fun fact, kind of like, I don't know, a little bit of a no-brainer, dairy animals in general, they have to have a baby in order to lactate, which makes sense because human animals have to have babies to lactate as well, which is why I said it's a no-brainer. But if you want to produce dairy products at home, you need a female and you don't necessarily have to have a male, but you do have to have uh, a male servicer, if you will. (laughs) And then you have babies, which is super fun. But obviously a huge responsibility and something that you should read up on and know the ins and ins and outs of, or at least do some initial research before you invest in a backyard cow. But if you want to learn more about backyard dairy, backyard cow raising, get this book. Again, it's called The Backyard Cow, An Introductory Guide to Keeping a Productive Family Cow. Well, and then the last book to talk about for this particular category Uh, is one of my favorites. It is called Farm Anatomy, The Curious Parts and Pieces of Country Life. It's by Julia Rothman. It's just a super playful book um, that's also really informative, which I appreciate. So there's information in here. Let's see. Chapter one is called Breaking Ground. So talking about soil, the texture triangle, mineral nutrients, crop rotation, contour farming and terracing, Wind breaks. Uh, chapter two is called Raised in a Barn. So it's talking about how to build a barn, talking about timber construction and barn doors, bracing, uh, barn birds, farm buildings, animal housing, feeders, fencing, all that good stuff. Chapter three is all about tools. Oh my God, I love tools. Talks about how to plow a field inside a combine, other machines, felling, bucking, splitting, and stacking. <laughs> Lots of great things in the chapter on tools. Chapter four is all about planting a seed. So cultivating vegetables. Um, She goes through and talks about average frost dates. Super important. Uh, Vegetable anatomy, squash varieties, building a bean teepee, four ways to grow tomatoes, growing grains, planting an orchard. So much good stuff in here. And then chapter five is quite extensive and is all about separating the sheep from the goats. So talks all about animals from uh, animal terms to chickens roosters fresh eggs ducks and geese turkeys uh, parts of a beef animal how a cow stomach works how to milk a cow parts of a goat hoof trimming uh, horses draft horse breeds draft harness mules parts of a pig pig breeds sheep a rabbit parts of a bee bee anatomy Chapter six is all about country whining and dining. So how to make wine. Oh my gosh. Edible flowers, basics of bread making, dairy terms, making cheese, butcher knives, how to cut up a chicken, prime cuts of beef, how to build a barrel smokehouse. I mean, I can keep going. Let me just keep going. Uh, Root celebrating, making maple syrup. Uh, Chapter seven is spinning a yarn. So talking about Carding and spinning yarn, natural dyes, how to make a flower press, how to make a corn husk doll, (laughs) making candles, quilt patterns. Oh my gosh. I mean, like I said, this is a great read. It's, it is educational, but it's also playful and fun and graphic. Farm Anatomy, The Curious Parts and Pieces of Country Life by Julia Rothman. Check it out. The next category of books that I want to share with you is all about chickens, all about raising chickens at home. Um, And this section, I only have three books to share with you. So it'd be pretty quick. The first one is called The Suburban Chicken, The Guide to Keeping Healthy, Thriving Chickens in Your Backyard. We have eight chickens in our backyard. And, you know, as a chicken tender, sorry for the pun, It's really hard to find information sometimes and understand what's going on with your flock. And so that's why having reference books and knowing other backyard chicken 
moms, parents, that can be really helpful because it's hard to find information about chickens. But this book, The Suburban Chicken, it's all about raising chickens, you know, in your in your backyard, potentially in a neighborhood. Uh, just a little disclaimer. Oh, if you have an HOA, be sure you know how they feel about chickens before you get chickens. But anyway, in this book, you'll learn all about chickens, uh, the family chicken, how to start your flock, talking about the nitty gritty, which is related to having grit and how chickens digest their food and why um, that grit is so important to chicken health and flock health, how to know what to feed your chickens, preventative care for maintaining a healthy flock. I'm talking about predators, which is unfortunately really important to consider. I will give a disclaimer. There are some graphic pictures in this book. Helpful, but graphic. So yeah, there's just a lot of great information in here. And again, you know, I mentioned this last week when I was talking about plants and vegetables and kind of a good first filter for finding information is to try to find resources that are as specific as possible to how and where you are, are growing food. Same goes for tending to chickens. So another book related to tending chickens is called Chickens for the Backyard Homesteader. The Essential Guide to Choosing and Keeping Happy, Healthy Hens. And in here, you will find some great resources, some great information um, related to housing, equipment, feed, how to choose your chickens, how to transport <laughs> chickens, what to do like if you get chicks and you bring them home, daily care and chicken behavior, super helpful as well as points on maintaining healthy flock and well-being, um, as well as a whole chapter just on eggs. Let me flip to the chapter on eggs. Because like, I mean, I raise my chickens for their eggs. We do not eat our chickens that we have in the backyard, although you definitely could raise chickens at home for meat instead of eggs, or you could do both. When you tend to chickens and you harvest the eggs yourself, You'll gain a greater appreciation for, for those little birds and that protein source. Also, fun fact, if you do not have chickens at home, and maybe you didn't know this, but you actually don't have to refrigerate your, your homegrown eggs. When a chicken lays an egg, it forms this membrane around the eggshell, which keeps the egg inside protected and insulated and nothing can penetrate or like seep into the eggshell to compromise the egg. And in doing that, it creates a shelf-stable product. If you have chickens at home and you're collecting eggs, you don't have to put those eggs in the refrigerator. You can just leave them out on your counter. I have like this little spiral egg organizer thing. I'll put a link in the show notes to it. Um, it's super cute. But I put all my eggs there. I always give this disclaimer anytime I gift eggs to somebody. You want to float them. Yeah. So you fill up a little cup of water and you drop your egg in it. And if it floats, then you don't want to eat that egg. It means it's a bad egg. Um, but if it sinks to the bottom, then that's good. And then you just want to put just a dab of soap on there and rinse it off. So you get that membrane off. And also like, you know, these eggs are coming out of the ugly side of a chicken. Just wash the shell before you crack it open. Anyway, fun little egg disclaimer. Okay. And the third book to mention is Under the Henfluence by Tova Danovich, Inside the World of Backyard Chickens and the People Who Love Them. This is a really sweet read. I have not finished this book. I will tell you that up front, but I have picked it up several times. This is a newer book. I think it just came out this year. But Tova Danovich, I also heard her on the Ologies podcast by Allie Ward. I will link that episode as well in the show notes. Uh, Tova just goes through and she talks about her fascination and love and appreciation of chickens. And so far, it's super delightful. Okay, ready to talk through the next category of books? Well, every year I do buy the Old Farmer's Almanac because it's super helpful as a reference throughout the year just to understand weather patterns and like planting dates, trends in gardening, food production, vegetables, all that good stuff. 
just a good book to just be up to snuff on every year. But I have also recently found these two books that are really fun and really helpful. So they're not books that would change from year to year. These are kind of standalone books that you can reference at any time of the year, but there is specific content based on the season or the month or the day. So this first one that I will mention is called The Country Wisdom Almanac. (laughs) And it has 373 tips, crafts, home improvements, recipes, and homemade remedies. And it starts off with spring uh, and then goes summer, fall, winter. And within each season, there are the same categories. So it's animals, cooking, crafts, gardening, health and fitness, home, repeat. So let me flip to the autumn uh, and just rattle off some of the things that, that this book talks about specifically to this season. So for animals, we have bird identification 101, at different uses for different horse blankets. Fascinating. Wholesome honey dog treats. Tips to save you from cat scratches. Love it. Uh, for cooking, we have dry your own mushrooms, cooking older vegetables. Thank you. Making peanut brittle, pumpkin soup. Yum. Homemade lard. Delish. Oh. Preparing a game bird, preparing small game. Y'all, ready for this? Squirrel skillet pie. Mm. All right. For crafts, we have the apple cone tree, braiding onions, making your own lavender scented candles, tying a quilt, and quickie spice wreath. Sounds fun. For gardening, we have green manure crops. Uh, that's a nice little plug for my recent episode on why you should sow cover crops this time of year. So I will link that in the show notes and you should give it a listen. Go back and, and find that episode. I think it's episode five, all about cover crops. Let's see. Growing Irish potatoes in the fall. That's something I have never done, but would love to do. How to grow garlic. Also, little plug for episode six of this podcast, uh, all about growing garlic at home. Uh, We also have harvesting squash, storing squash, planning ahead for in-garden vegetable storage. Health and fitness. We have for fall, making a salve, throat soothing pastilles, hints of mint, herbal hair and massage oil, relaxing foot massage oil, and then, oh my goodness, step-by-step full body massage, part one and part two. Handy. And then for the home in the fall, this book has uh, a list for emergency food ideas, tips for purifying water, identifying your timber trees, felling a tree, drying firewood, how to repair a crack around a bathtub or shower in two parts, Um, and cleaning hardwood floors. Super helpful. So anyway, that is the Country Wisdom Almanac. Pick it up. It's fun. It's a fun little read. Easygoing. Also a great like morning coffee peruse, if you will. Um, And then the second almanac that I have is called the Earth Almanac. I picked this up from a coffee shop in the mountains of North Carolina in the town, the little town that my mother-in-law lives in, Lansing, North Carolina. There's a precious coffee shop right in the middle of downtown. I think it's Old Orchard Creek Coffee Shop or Cafe. I forget the name. I will put a link to it in the show notes because it's wonderful. And the owners of the coffee shop actually own a blueberry farm in Lansing as well. And we went up over the 4th of July and picked blueberries at Old Orchard Creek, and it was delicious. So the Earth Almanac, there are 365 entries. Every day has a different entry that you can read about. So let me see if I can find November 14th. I found it. So November 14th, Legs for Miles. It's easy to lump all the leggy invertebrates together, but they really are quite different. Not all bugs are even insects. The peds for example, are most closely related to lobsters, crayfish, and shrimp than they are to insects. Millipedes are decomposers. So there you go. The Earth Almanac. One of the descriptions of this book is daily inspiration and 365 facts about the natural world, including amphibians, aquatic life, astronomy, behaviors, and adaptations, birds, botany, citizen science, fish, fungi, and lichen, 
geology, habitat, holidays and celebrations, invertebrates, mammals, people, public lands, reptiles, scientific concepts, weather, and much more. Earth Almanac. Pick it up. So we are getting close to the end of my book list for today. Um, And I just have three more to share with you. And these next two are all about home food preservation and fermentation. So first up, we have The Art of Fermentation by Sandor Elix Katz. If any of you have ever played around with fermentation before, then perhaps you know how exciting it can be. And for those of you who have never tried to ferment something at home, I would strongly encourage you to give it a try. This is quite a hefty book to to own. It's nearly 500 pages. Katz goes through and talks about the benefits of consuming fermented things, basic concepts behind fermentation and equipment that you might need. It's a pretty extensive chapter about just like how to go about fermenting. Uh, In the subsequent chapters, he kind of categorizes it based off of uh, different products that you're making. So chapter four, for example, is about fermenting sugars into alcohol. Um, So how to make meads, wines, and ciders. Um, Chapter five is all about fermenting vegetables and some fruit. Um, There's specific recipes in here for all kinds of things. Um, Learning how to make brines, sauerkraut, of course, kimchi. Oh my God, I could eat my body weight in kimchi. Uh, Chapter six is all about fermenting sour tonic beverages. So this would include things like ginger beer. (laughs) How fun would that be to make your own ginger beer, you guys? Uh, Kvass, which is actually a fermented beet beverage. Delish. Uh, Tepache, which is made from uh, pineapple skins. Uh, Kefir, roots beer. So a little aside, Marshall and I, Marshall is my boyfriend slash partner slash like committed, handsome, rugged, Uh, lumberjack man that I live with. (laughs) He's my dog daddy too. We made root beer. Root beer is Marshall's favorite soda, favorite beverage. I think he would say that. And we made some root beer a couple years ago. Super fun. Super fun. Oh yeah. Uh, There's also kombucha on here, how to make your own vinegar, how to make a shrub, how to make June uh, or Jun, but I think it's June, which is a fermented honey drink. Yummy. Chapter seven is all about fermenting milk. Talks about raw milk, yogurt, kefir, uh, cheese. So like I said, cheese is fermented milk. Yep. Chapter six is all about uh, fermenting grains and starchy tubers. Uh, So, you know, talking about grits and polenta and uh, using uh, grains like millet and sorghum and rice. Let's see. Cassava's on here. Oh, yeah. Lots of great stuff here. Uh, Chapter nine is all about fermenting beers and other grain-based alcoholic beverages. Um, So on here, we've got sorghum beer, rice beer, sake, talking about barley, yeast beers, all the good stuff. Growing mold cultures. Oh, my gosh. So like tempeh is mentioned here. So cool. Fermenting beans, nuts, and seeds. Like making your own tofu, your own miso, your own soy sauce. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have uh, fermenting meat, fish, and eggs. So practices like drying, salting, smoking, and curing, those are all fermenting practices. And then the last couple of chapters here, the last two chapters are on considerations for commercial enterprises, which may or may not apply to you. And then non-food applications of fermentation. Fascinating. So anyway, if you are into fermenting, you want to try fermenting at home. Uh, Sandor Katz, The Art of Fermentation. I feel like you cannot talk about books and uh, home food growing, just producing your own food, without mentioning the ball complete book of home preserving with 400 delicious and creative recipes for today. (laughs) So this is the complete book of home preserving by ball, (laughs) like ball jar, um, and walks you through different recipes and practices for creating and preserving fruits, salsas, relishes, chutneys, condiments, pickles, tomatoes, specifically when talking about tomatoes, how to manage your acid 
in that. Um, also talks about pressure canning, the low acid foods, the art and science of home preservation, how to modify due to altitude. Um, there's a whole problem solver in this book for home canning and knowing how to purchase produce and what equipment you will need to preserve food at home. And this is really just a great uh, recipe book and guide for canning. So if you haven't canned before, you can can and you should can um, and you should reference the ball complete book of home food preserving. If you could see this book of mine, I have, oh, at least a dozen earmarks and bookmarks in this book of either recipes that have worked really well or ones that I want to try or both. But I have made a lot of recipes from this book. That just about wraps up today's episode, all about the books on my bookshelf. This is part two of a two-part series. Um, so now that we're nearing the end of this episode, maybe you want to go back and listen to last week's episode if you missed it. Uh, before we get to our last and final book, it's what we're going to sign off on today that I would love to hear your home composting questions. So in two weeks, I'm going to do a whole episode on composting, the basics of composting at home, how to get started, how it is not as difficult or as smelly or as unpleasant as you might think it is. Um, and I would love to take your specific questions to include in the episode. So I did this uh, a couple weeks ago with an episode all about growing garlic at home, and it worked out really well. And I hope you'll send in some questions about composting that I can include in this upcoming episode. The best place to send me questions is just the growing space podcast at gmail.com. Um, it's a email that I set up just for this podcast. And if you have questions that you want me to answer that aren't related to composting, <laughs> You can send those to me too. I would love to make that part of this podcast is taking questions from you and giving you the answers you're looking for uh, directly. So if you have questions about composting or other subjects, feel free to email them to me. It's the growing space podcast at gmail.com. And I'll put that in the show notes again, growing space podcast at gmail.com. Our last book for this week is one is a small one. It's a short and sweet one, but it's called How to Eat. And it is written by a Buddhist monk. Called, his name is Thich Nhat Hanh. And he's a Zen master uh, Buddhist monk. This book has just short little snippets, all related to being mindful about our relationship with food, how we eat uh, to keep things in perspective, and just keep our relationship with food and growing food in check. Uh, I wanted to close out today's episode with just reading one of these mindful food meditations. And this is our fun like little closer for today. If you've listened to other episodes and you know, at the end of every episode, I include a fun little treat uh, for you all. Sometimes it's a pro tip. Sometimes it's a story from my growing space. And today it is an excerpt from this book, How to Eat by Thich Nhat Han. Okay, you ready? So the title of this meditation is Eating a String Bean. Eating a String Bean. Hold up a string bean and take a moment to see that it is a string bean with the whole world in it. There are clouds, sunshine, the whole earth, and the hard work of the gardener. When we can see like that, we have wisdom. When we have wisdom, it means we have mindfulness and concentration. Don't chew your worries, your suffering, or your projects. That's not good for your health. Just chew the string bean. All right, y'all. Carry on. Just chew the string bean. Next week uh, is the week of Thanksgiving. And appropriately so, we are going to talk about gratitude next week. Uh, so tune in and thanks for joining. <laughs>